So I'm I have posted the charts of the trades on the VC channel in series. So you can go through them or open the charts on your phone right now while you're hearing 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 me talk, and then I'll try to explain why I took the trades I did. Right now it's clear. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So first of all, the day opened with a gap down. This is where DDs are extremely important. So Bran is online right now. Uh, he can probably tell you guys later, but he's done. posts where he has analyzed gap ups gap downs etc especially on the indices so i feel the indices these trades were taken on the indices on nifty and bank nifty so initially a lot of work has to be done to figure out what happens over the tendency of the market is when there's a gap down opening so today that's what i'll be focusing on so if you go through data you'll find that on days when there's a gap down opening it's extremely hard for the market to keep falling for the entire day why the logic is fairly simple if it's a gap down opening if anybody was looking to short it's easier for him to reach his target price if the gap covered some of the way so during trading hours the market doesn't have as long to fall the other main thing to keep in mind is as i've always said have a view first understand what the trend of the markets will be before initiating any trades so when it comes to price action for a day to be down trending for a day to fall down the rest of the way you need a steady diet of buyers and sellers both when you buy a future you need somebody to sell you a future right so what happens in days like this when you have three massive red candles is there's a gap there's been a gap down opening there have been three massive red candles now and the price has already moved quite a bit nifty was at 820 and had reached 620 almost so that's a 200 point move already in nifty in a span of half an hour so at this point of time there'll be very few people who will be taking on new trades if you're a seller most of your price point has already been reached you might just be looking at booking profits because there are no buyers here those that's what those three red candles signify so on the third candle once i saw that uh, there was some resistance even though at the end of the day you guys can currently see like a solid uh, a solid body red candle but during the day there was some signs of buyers coming in and there was a massive volume but the candle didn't really move as much so that did give me an indication of okay buyers might just be coming in now and since the gap down opening had occurred and since the market had moved so much already i expected there to be some profit booking in the markets especially because there hasn't been some crazy fundamental news fact which is affecting the markets by 9:30 all everybody was talking about was adani right that adani stocks since jeta dalal and adani stocks of hrlc now they'll go to zero and stuff like that now just just this in itself a lot of the comments i heard from you guys they are absolute fallacies you guys are making like a fundamental investing mistake this is a fairly common problem which most beginner investors have they look at company x and they'll talk about okay so company x now has a a brilliant new product y so since this product is amazing and it's the best product in the markets i will buy this company because it is it is going to do so well what people fail to account for is how much that product actually contributes to the profitability of a company if a product is brilliant but it contributes 5% of the bottom line the price isn't going to move as much and it's similar with adani with the atani stocks hitting lc and stuff look at the entire weightage they have on nifty so just because the markets are bearish and i was texting i was texting with the entire day from roughly 9:15 onwards so he kept talking about how nifty might just hit an lc or nifty might go down by 3% today when there really isn't anything for the rest of the stocks to fall by so much right so these were these are all the things that you have to take care of one you always need to have a view before you enter a trade even before you enter i try to judge what the next candle will be how the next candle is behaving and if the candle start behaving the way i expect them to that's when i'll enter a trade so i basically have a mock trade in my head before entering my real trade so okay i want to go long here there's been a gap down opening the markets have fallen so much already uh buyers buyers might just start coming in or you might just have some profit booking let me wait for signs so i expect this next candle to fall down but not fall on as fast I expect the volume to pop up to pop up more than in the previous candle however i don't expect i don't expect the candle to be of a bigger size because I expect that some of the volume is there with buyers as well 
So with all of this, I took my position at 9.31. And I got lucky in the fact that the, the next candle itself, the next five-minute candle was a big green candle. And it overtook the previous candle. As we all know, this is a sign of bullishness. And another factor which helped me was the fact that volume had dropped. So the volume dropping in this case, again, people make very general statements about how if the volume is very low, then that means it's a false move or something of that sort. However, the markets don't really work that way. They aren't really any absolutes. What low volume here signified is there wasn't really a fight put up by the sellers. The sellers weren't really actively trying to push the price down. Okay, I just want to double check. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. I do think so. Yes. I can. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I can, I can hear you. Okay. So the reason, so hopefully the reason for entering the trade is fairly simple. When everybody is talking about being bearish, it, when the news outlets are all talking about LCs, that can be a sign. What you up and analyze what the information truly says to figure out what's happening. Another thing to keep in mind is DDs are extremely important. Most of the work in trading is done on market hours. During market hours, you're just playing around. Market hours are supposed to be the fun time. You put in the work later. It's like playing cricket or whatever. Nobody gets better during the game. You get better by putting in work after trading hours. On the pitch, it's simple. Okay, coming back to coming back to this trade. The exit, again, wasn't really perfect because I exited at 1031. And at 1010, the markets did go up by another 10, 10, 15 points. So that could have been slightly better. However, the reason I exited the trade was because Bank Nifty didn't really look as strong. Bank Nifty still looked fairly weak. And I expect Bank Nifty to correct a bit more than it did. I was actually expecting Bank Nifty to hit around 34600. And if it had hit 34600 again, I would have gone long on Nifty. So that was my entire plan, which is why I exited the trade, hoping for a retracement. And on the retracement, I'll try to go long. However, that didn't happen. And Bank Nifty, you know, Bank Nifty and Nifty pumped up before reaching that level. So the reason for exiting this trade is I don't really expect this to be a trending day. Again, there's been there's been a fall already. I have no hopes of this being trending, which turned out to be wrong. But yeah, this was just my thought process during that time. And once that trade happened, once I booked that trade, I initiated my second trade at uh, at 1108. At 11.08 in, in Nifty. By 11.08, Nifty had just touched its VWAP. It's not really an indicator I use all the time, but in this case, it did give me a certain idea that on the stronger index, since Nifty, since Bank Nifty wasn't falling as much, I was slightly comfortable taking a long position in Nifty, hoping for a small up move, and I would just scalp that position. Because after such a big up move, I didn't expect Nifty to fall all the way down. I expected it to go upwards one more time, maybe test the the same the same highs that it made around one five seven four three. That was my target, and then exit the position. However, after I entered, the market still hovered around that range for for the next half an hour, and I didn't really see any size in the candles. The volume had also really, and there wasn't a lot happening. So since it, since there wasn't much that was happening, I just exited my trade at a small profit. Now, looking back, obviously, at that massive green candle later on, but I can't really, you can't really judge that because the volume had dried up and all of a sudden you had so much buying pressure. It was fairly random in that instance. Now, the pump, the pump which happened at 1, 126, right? The, one, the 120 pump in Nifty. That trade was slightly risky. However, it still made fairly simple sense to me that... Nifty, Bank Nifty is a weaker index here. And this such a massive pump is caused by institutions, right? But the same exact logic applies. After such a massive pump, you do expect people to be scared of. You do expect people to book profits. Because when it's there right at that high, after that crazy pit by adequate volume. So if, for example, stock X has been in a range for a month and now it's breaking out, if the volumes aren't high enough, you know, this could just be a false breakout. So don't hop onto this trade. Unless the volume starts really pumping upwards, don't take that trade. And most swing traders, and most swing traders firmly believe in this. So you can look at Arik Aji, he's currently on the call, I think. You can look at Lumia Man. All these guys do apply volume. But the problem most traders make is they think of this as a rule. 
in intraday trades, you have to you kind of have to understand what the market is doing. So in this case, on the green candle, right? When I entered my position at 9.35, the green candle had low volume. However, that didn't mean that the reversal is fake. All that was showing me was there isn't enough activity by the sellers and the sellers are unable or unwilling to short the markets further. Make sense? Yes, somewhat. <laughs> Thank you for some context. Yeah. What was conviction stop loss of the trade? My stop losses are fairly fixed. Uh, for this trade, one second. For the first trade, my stop loss was 15590. 15590. That was my stop loss. How to enter options that are good price? Do I use limit order or market order? That is a great question. Mainly because so many people say, spend so much time on this, even Mukesh Ambani. So, this is one of the questions that he had. And what I told him is all of this thing, all of these questions are secondary. It doesn't really matter. You'll make money if your view is right. You'll lose money if your view is wrong. Too many people focus too much on what the delta of this option is, how liquid this option is, uh, what the Greeks are exactly. This one has too much theta. This one has too much gamma. Market prices will make me lose five, five option points or something. None of that really matters as much as you guys think. What's more important is your view. So look at this option. The, I mean, look at the screenshot I've sent you guys on the VC channel. The strike price I had was 15350. If you look at the chart again, first of all, it's an in the money option. Secondly, it, it ends with a 50. So it's highly illiquid. And this is something I wanted to show Mukesh Ambani that it doesn't really matter what option you enter at. If your view is right, you'll still end up making money. So less time focusing on market orders or limit orders and more time focusing on what the markets will do. More time focusing on the price action, what the markets are actually telling you. Yeah, so it doesn't matter. You can use limit orders, you can use general, you can use market orders, but you'll be profitable or loss making depending on your view. Okay, any last question? Yeah. Any particular reason I chose, one second, any particular reason I chose in the money options? Uh, basically, I usually trade futures. However, with slightly risky trades, I prefer in the money because they basically act as futures, right? Since they're fairly deep in the money. So that's why I Guana. What's the book I suggested? I mean, Al Brooks has, a ton, has tons of books. You'll find tons of content on YouTube. But it's not only really price action that makes a difference. It's your DDs that make a difference. The stuff that Bran has done, on, uh, I think Brand did it for gap up openings and he's made a lot of money just based on that one DD he did during the mentorship. Sorry, somebody else is speaking. Yeah, uh, I have a question on that uh, 931 trade. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so you went long at 931, right? Uh, so mm -hmm. uh, it is basically that uh, what if uh, you would have waited for, a, let's say, uh, another candle or, or waited for it to close to give some confirmation as that the 931 entry could just be an upper wick on, on a bad day. Uh, I mean, first of all, my entry wasn't perfect anyway, right? Because after 931, the markets fell for the next three, four minutes. But I thought this was a good point to enter. That's basically it even if the markets fell by another 10, 20, 30, 40 points, I'd be willing to hold on that there would be a reversal. So what I do in this, these situations, right? Suppose I've entered this trade and the, and the next two candles are also red. It hasn't hit my stop loss so far since my stop losses are fairly wide. So it hasn't hit my stop loss. But in that case, what I'll do is since my view was wrong, as soon as that position comes into the green, I might just exit my position. Not always, but this is something that I do follow. Unless a trade behaves exactly the way I expect it to, I don't hold on to it. But once a trade behaves the way I, I, I thought it would, I will hold on to it for as long as I possibly can and try to milk everything from it. Even if eventually the trade goes to zero, that's fine by me. I'm very happy booking small losses as long as I get to make big profit. Hello? Yeah. Uh, yes, bro. Uh, with the channel that, uh, you know, I personally use Fibonacci for my 
Mm-hmm. Will that it, uh, will the uh, topic related to Fibonacci will come up uh, in the upcoming discussion or uh, uh, it's postponed? I don't know. That will happen later, man. I mean, Mukesh Amani should take that pretty soon. Yeah. So yeah, it's nine thirty yeah, already. Can I get uh, no when? Uh, But can I know when will be when will it, when will it be available? I mean, sorry, when will you come to the VC? Probably in the next five minutes, man. Yeah, thank you. Mokesh is online, so he's probably just waiting for this call to end, and then he can stream. Yeah, thank you. Okay, all right, guys. I'll not waste any more of your time. Thank you for listening. Bye, bye. Best of luck, Mokesh.